Uh, Dave and Ed, welcome to Australian Musician. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. We're here because you're just about to embark on another On The Quiet tour, uh, which is uh, a stripped back version of your song. So you did this 10 years ago, maybe. Uh, yeah. Why have you decided to do it again? Well, it's been a while, well, 10 years. And in that time, we've made a couple more records. And uh, maybe this recent stuff actually maybe lends itself a bit more to this sort of format anyway. But it was just a really good thing to do back then. So, you know, we thought we'd change it up a little bit and do it again, so, yeah. Do you enjoy the, uh, the, the rearranging and the, the rehearsing and the uh, reimagining of songs? Is that a, a good part of what you do? Yeah, well, Dave. Yeah, definitely, that's, I think that's really essential. We really enjoyed it last time round, just, it's that thing of sort of unshackling yourself from the way you made that song when you first recorded it. And again, exploring a different side of it, maybe highlighting a different shade of things. And those songs are really strong as very simple songs. Glenn Rock is a really fantastic songwriter, so we're lucky in that we can do that and it, and it really, and it not lose its power. Sometimes it can be more potent. Yeah. Are there any songs that come up particularly well, do you think, with this form? Uh, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm too close to say, I'm, too, I'm a bit close, I think most songs are pretty, they're really strong songs um, just with a guitar and a vocal or a piano and a vocal. Uh, hearing, getting to hear the, the, the voices together, you know, of us all, all singing and really the simple and spare um, uh, instrumentation, that's that really does lend itself to songs that a bit, you know, I think we might have filled up the space a bit too much <laughs> when we recorded it, so I'd probably say all of them. Is that a right answer? Yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing as a right or wrong answer, David. But um, <laughs> it, I just think that, yeah, we are more sort of trying to um, just explore the idea of pairing everything back. And it is, as a musician, um, it is hard to do when you first start out. We, you get caught up in practicing and guitar pedals and gear and that and noise and bigger amps and stuff like that and then you go, you end up with this big sort of sound but really at the end of the day you need to get back to this essence of hmm. music, musicality, melody, you know, whatever else it is and it's a big arc, massive arcing journey and we sort of, we're on that like every other musician and every other band. Um, this format means that you get, you're sort of kicked along in that direction where you have to um, take note of if you're singing harmonies together. That's a whole other world that arguably, us as, as musicians, we, we sort of, it's not, I'm not a natural singer. I am not a singer. But we all have to sort of kick in to sing backing vocals because Glenn, when he puts them down in the studio, they're very ornate, layered, they're, they're beautiful pieces of music in themselves, but so we try our very best to recreate that live and doing uh, an On The Quiet tour really, really pushes us to, uh, you know, to take note of that and, and do our best, so. So, uh, what sort of adjustments do you actually make? I mean, Dave, you, what you, your kit like uh, for this tour compared to an electric tour? Well, it gets paired back Generally, like probably the same four-piece, one up, one down. But I, ha I usually do actually use some electronics in the live thing. I like the, the electric thing. Um, but this one, it's very simple, some percussion. Play. I play uh, some other instruments while we're doing it. I step away from the kit a bit just so we can not necessarily be rocking away uh, all the time. But sim simplicity probably is, that's a really... Yeah. And Ed, what adjustments do you make to your gear? Well, so I, I'm a bass player, I play electric bass. I've, I've played double bass on a couple of songs on the recording, but I, I don't own a double bass. But So um, I've got an acoustic bass guitar, so it's a, it's a big sort of... It's not a dreadnought shape, it's whatever the other shape is, I forget. Um, we call it the peanut shape. Peanut, let's go peanut. Um, and it's a bass guitar, so 
um, but it's got electronics in it and I basically use that but I'm using um, black nylon tape wound strings which I'm advised by the lovely folks at the base centre that I'm about the only person in Melbourne who orders them. <laughs> Uh, I just love the sound of them. Uh, I wasn't a child of the 70s, but I probably should have been born in the 60s or something. Um, they sound fantastic. Um, and uh, so I'm kind of going for a halfway double bass sound with my instrument. And uh, I mean, there's an, it is an aesthetic thing as well. We're, we're sort of seated, we're playing acoustic instruments. Um, so that's my change in setup, but I've also just bought a new amplifier, I've sort of downgraded, never thought I'd go there, never thought I'd go to a class D amplifier, but here we are, we all do it. Um, so, and I'm a Fender in Dorsey, so I bought a Fender amp head, a um, Rumble 800, which is an amazing amp head, by the way. It's, I'm just blown away by how much power it's got. <laughs> it's gonna say something else. Um, but, um, but the tone is fantastic. And so, so that's, my, that's my change in gear, but, and no pedals. It's the idea is to really, the focus is on the vocals and playing and singing together. I mean, it's always the case in full band mode, but it's just really more, it's got to be right. Yeah. Um, there's no reverb, there's no big sound, uh, big room, um, you know, reverb and whatever noise to sort of hide behind it's it's you just sort of expose there so yeah that's what i'm doing with my gear it's literally just bass um straight. getting a good acoustic sound live is an eternal problem yeah for a lot of artists yeah uh, what have you guys learned over the years you are well you are this this master did, of this well not not really but the debate with um you'll go and see a band playing acoustically and the guitarists will have the feedback buster or not you know, you put a feedback buster in and it's just like a choking sort of sound. You kind of think, oh, it's not very inspiring. I know these days, acoustic guitar electronics have come a really long way. Um, there's some guitar manufacturers that have got pickups in the neck. There's a, you know, you can blend a mic. Then, then, then there's like the bridge pickup. So there's a lot of different variables now. Um, feedback is the big issue. How do you get a big tone without the feedback? Um, so, with me, I, I just I just try to control. I, I try to read the room acoustically, and you know every room you go to set up your gear in is different. You're dictated by the physics of the room, so you're going to get resonant frequencies that you didn't get maybe on the last stage you played on. So just being attuned to that, and you know trying to notch it out when you when you can. But every as you know, every time you notch out it. A frequency you're losing a bit of tone so it's a constant battle and but the main thing is keeping the volumes down like a front of house person will always say <laughs> keep it down on stage please yeah. so in general how many songs would you re rehearse up for a tour like this I reckon we've probably done 15 yeah 15 or 15 16. yeah to 18 and look there might be some and one of these type of things these tours sometimes you can say why don't we you know the momentum of the tour starts and then you ram one another and then we're, why don't we try this song? You know, and then we might get some feedback from the audience saying, we would love to hear this song. And yeah. So yeah, it depends, you know, we've got six albums worth of material. That's a lot. So yeah, there's, we're not Midnight All who did, who rehearsed every song for their, from, you know, uh, you know, for their Round the World tour, but you know, I guess we aspire to that. <laughs> I guess that's the thing, as time goes on, you make more records, there's another bunch of songs to choose from. And so, but your set list, your, the time on stage doesn't necessarily get any longer. So you have got more to choose from. And yeah, some songs do sadly get left behind. Um, but this time, you know, we'll be able to play a few of those. Um, and yeah. that's what this tour is about yeah. too, where we can go and look, find some jewels in the junk heap so to speak, that, that, that we didn't get a, a proper airing on, a, on a, a, an album tour. Yeah. Kind of gives us a chance to go across the the, uh, the whole catalogue. And there is a, just one thing I'll say, there is a chance that, are we going to record any of this? What's, what's happened there? I hope so. Possibly. Yeah. There may be some kind of semi-official, unofficial capturing of the, of, of, <laughs> the, of the tour. What are you most proud of with your work with All You March? 
gosh, I haven't done interviews in a really long time. So interviews? I, you proud? Well, I, just this whole music world. It's just it's. I'm sort of a bit out of out of the loop here. Can you start the answer? Well, sorry. <laughs> speaking for myself, um, <clears throat> that we've. This is everyone's first band, and we've maintained, we've stayed together, and we've continued to make new albums and moved, you know, continued forward. And everyone is still around. That that's probably like any in any walk of life. You know, being around the same people, um, other than your family, it, it, you move through things all the time. But to do it in a creative way and to still, you know, have there be a a spark and the collaboration I think that's been re that's really that's something that you, I know I hang my hat on and just continuing to develop that relationship that you've essentially we're a weird family you know but you know staying together and doing that that's probably the biggest thing for me and I'm going to contrast Dave's answer by talking about I guess I'm most proud personally of you know our first two records just because there was an innocence about not only us as a band but us playing us being in the studio we we had a bit of a focus that that I'm not sure that we've ever re we've had it since and seriously you listen to it on the headphones there's a couple of songs on our first album and you can feel uh, the pocket the musical pocket that for example me and Dave are in I, I could name a couple of songs but um, Tulip is one of them. Uh, there's a rhythmic pocket that Dave and I are in and we never had to sort of sit down and go, hey, yeah, let's, let's play in the back pocket in this song because it's going to... No, it was just all intuitive. It was all just unspoken. And that kind of magic of making records and making stuff that's, you know, arguably going to stand the test of time, that's what I'm most proud of, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Dave and Ed, thanks for joining us. We look forward to the tour next week. No Thank you. Thank you.